Hey everyone, I just finished a live stream, one of the music mindfulness uh, shows, and I have this hand pan set up and I thought I'll do a patron only video for you all about how I approach playing the hand pan, how I set it up, orient it, how I might reorient it for different um, purposes, music purposes, uh, ergonomic purposes, and also one of my main goals in this video is to show you how you can figure out how to play two different chords, how to get two different chords happening so you're not playing the same full set of notes all the time. It's good to break it up so you get two different, you know, at least two different chords. That way you have more um, move, chordal movement. It, it, I'll, I'll explain, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's get to it. Um, you've got the overhead view here. And first of all, uh, I wanna just orient you to this hand pan. So, um, this is a D minor hand pan, and the ding or center note is a D. And then it's got this scale on the outside. I'm just going to alternate back and forth. Um, and right now, I'm, you can see I'm playing with my thumb. If I strike it right in the dimple, it's not too bad. It's actually pretty thumb friendly. <laughs> so you can do that or you can strike it here. Tends to be, the sound tends to be a little brighter on the flat part of the note. Because you're getting more harmonics. Let me show you with the, uh, the mallet. Let me grab a couple. I'm going to grab two different types of mallets here. This is a rubber, hard rubber. See the diff you, Can you hear the difference there? That's in the dimple, and then here's on the, the flat part. So you tend to get a little more harmonic. I'll show you on the center with the soft, this is a soft felt mallet. If I go here, that's a real different sound. Anyway, you can experiment with that. I'm going to play with my hands for right now. So the center note of a hand pan is usually, it's I would say 100% of the time, but don't quote me. I might be wrong, there, but generally speaking, the center note is the fundamental of the, of the tonality of the pan. So this is a D minor generally D minor pan, and so this is a D, right? And then, so that's the first thing you want to know, is um, what is the overall key? Because most hand pans are not what we call chromatic, right? They don't have all 12 notes. They have a series of notes in the 12 note scale. There's 12 chromatic notes in an octave. A, so there's 12, right? A, B, C, D, E, uh, F, G, and then there's the sharps and flats. So there's five sharps and flats. There's seven, you know, white keys, if you will, right? Basic music theory. Um, an octave is, well, let's go from C. So C to C, right? Right here. And then there's 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then it repeats. Most hand pans have um you know, a, a subset of that. So this hand pan has nine, what does it have? Nine, nine notes. Let's go back. So, well, this has nine on the outs. I'm sorry, eight on the outside, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, let's try to figure out the notes it has. So first of all, um, when, when looking at a hand pan or, or shopping for a hand pan, you're going to notice that at least one of the small notes, one of the outer notes, is going to be the octave, right? So this is a D, and now that's the D. I want you to notice my orientation here. I put the D octave right opposite me in a straight line, so I know that's D because that's a home note. So it's really easy if I do that, if I orient it this way, it's really easy for me to know that's my home So if, I, if, I, if I'm doing a lot of things, which when I'm doing live looping, I am, I'm operating a lot of equipment and I'm trying to plan and I'm sequencing and looping things, 
I just want to have a comfortable way to get home, you know, to the home note. So that's one thing you can try. You can also put it on your side facing you if you want. I find it a little bit easier to play the notes on the opposite side with my fingers, with my um, index finger, right? You can play them with your thumb, but it's pretty easy to play with your index. going to put most of the notes um, or the higher notes on that side and then I, I have the uh, you know the notes towards me I'm probably going to use my thumb because it's just easier than let me see if I can show you here it's easier it's easier to do this than to do this I can still do this uh, it's not that bad but my wrist becomes kind of bent whereas if I go if I do this my wrists are more relaxed. Let me show you in the overhead. So I don't know if you can see, but yeah, my wrists are pretty open, uh, pretty flat. If I go here, now my wrists are kind of bending like that. So I'm also angling the drum, like this would be perfectly flat, but I find if I angle it, I can get a little more access this way. This, this becomes a little more comfortable um, right? Instead of like that. So I'm angling it away from me. Um, I find that just more ergonomic. So that's a setup thing. Let's get back to the notes. I don't know that I'm going to figure, I'm going to be able to label every single note. I probably should have figured this out before, but you know, I want to just make a video in general. I want to, uh, let's figure out some of the notes and then I want to show you how you can get two different chords, um, or two different sounding note areas, you know, let's call them clusters or constellations might be a better word. All right, so you're going to analyze your pan, you're going to listen, and you're going to listen for, you know, the different notes, but let's just go through. So I'm going to bet that that is an A, this note is an A, let's see, let's check it. Yep. G, A, F, we know that's D, B flat, so basically, yeah, so basically we've got something like this. So D minor kind of uh, tonality, which incidentally is the same key as F major. So if you want to play your hand pan in a major key, you're going to count up three half steps for, from D, that would be D, E flat, E, F. So one, two, three, you're going to go up, and that's the major key. F major, D minor are what we call enharmonic keys, meaning they're, they're overlapping. The notes are the same notes. The only d thing that's different is the root or fundamental of the key, if that makes sense, all right? It's a matter of reframing, reshifting your orientation to what you consider to be the root. Um, but the, let's call, let's say we have a, a tree with a different root, but the branches are kind of the same. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good analogy or not. Um, Let's go through now and, and listen and figure out how we want to get different chord constellations, different tonality constellations. So here's something you can try. What you can do is find your home note. And then you're going to listen. And let's, let's use this note. This is a D up here. 
And I'm going to listen, and I'm going to play these other notes, and I want to decide, does that other note bl- fit, sound like it's uh, harmonious with this note, or is, does it sound like there's a little tension, right? And that's subjective, but listen, listen to this. Okay, to me that sounds like it's pretty open, pretty harmonious, right, harmonious. Let's listen to this one. Still kind of kind of open sounding, not too dissonant. Let's try this one. Yeah, so you know I'm gonna say that's kind of harmonious. Let's try this one. Yeah, pretty open. That's same as that. So this is an A over here. All right, let's try this one. All right, so you you hear that. To me, this sounds a little more crunchy. It sounds a little more, it's, it's got a, a tightness to it. You know, it's got a friction to it. And now let's try this one here. That's that's got a lot of tension too, I think. And then, do we do this one? Let's try this. Ah. So okay. So to me, I've identified three notes, and they're they're all kind of together here. I would say that these notes. These notes right here, they all have kind of a tension against the D, against this, against these Ds over here. Right? Now, guess what? If you play these notes together, they kind of go together. Why? Why is that? Well, because they all don't go with the D, chances are they're going to go with each other, all right? So that's kind of an interesting, and again, I know this is, this is experimental and it's subjective, but I want to put it into a non-analytical, non-music theory context for you so that you can explore it yourself and figure it out, and then, you know, then it's up to you how you want to use it. But this way of doing it, I think, pretty simple. Um, now I know, okay, or I believe, let me put it, let me say I believe, that these notes right here, these three, are going to be my second chord, I'm going to call it, my alternate, and then all of these are going to be my, my, main, my main tonality, or, or let's call it first, my number one. Uh, let me just check them to make sure they go together and I like it. I changed my mind. This note, well, I I think this note could go with either. I'm going to put, I'm going to, I'm going to say, I'm going to break it up. So we've got these four, just to balance it out. I'm going to take this, because I know this is the B flat. It's actually a half step away from A. So it's got a lot of tension with this note. So I'm going to take these four notes, one, two, three, four. These will be my second notes. And then these plus the the low will be my first. All right, let's see if that works. And I think I want to use the mallet. Now, let's go to the number two. is there left to do? I'm pretty happy with that. I'll tell you what is left to do is to add reverb because believe it or not, um, most of us that do music production and we're publishing or live streaming, uh, I do live looping. What I'm doing a lot of the time is I'm adding 
reverb, which is a form of distortion, but it makes it sound like you're in a big space, and that could be like a big echoey tunnel, or a big room like a concert hall, or a church, or a canyon, or a cave. And that, um, in case you didn't know, that is a you know music producer secret. And you know, the, how can I describe it? It's, it may, it's the difference between sounding like you're outside, which is dry, and you know the sound just goes, and inside, like I said, in a hall or a church or a cathedral or a cave or a tunnel. And we like that sound because it's the sound of the sound goes and then it hits a wall and it comes back. And it comes back at different times. And what that does is it makes it go on. It, makes, it gives it what we call a tail, you know, a, a sustain and a tail. And it's a really cool sound. I don't know why we like it so much, but we just do. It makes it sound interesting. I'll give you an example. I'm going to add some reverb right now. And hopefully, yes, you should be able to hear my voice now. Sounding like I'm in a big cave. But let me go back to the instrument and play it. Um, let's take it off for a second. I'm going to play it dry. And then I'm going to add the reverb. Here's, here's dry. Okay, let's add it. That's, uh, that was more satisfying <laughs> and fun. So there you go. Um, we've got orienting the pan, right? Positioning the pan uh, forwards and backwards. In other words, tipping it and also rotating it. You've got how you've got a, you've got you know how to find the the home note. In other words, and a lot of the pan sellers are going to tell you what notes are on the pan. You can go to their websites. I think they all have samples of them up there and they have you know the letter names the note names but in case you don't know or in case you don't care you can go through the process that i did and kind of just listen to the notes and compare them to the center note and then we have a way of figuring out how to get two different chord you know areas chord constellations tonality constellations if you want to call it and that makes it interesting because you can go back and forth and you've got tension and release or um, another word would be harmony, you know, on the release side and uh, dissonance on the tension side, right? And that's what makes music interesting. So if you're a player that's got, let's say, a tongue drum or a hand pan, and you've been just playing kind of all over, you know, playing all the notes all the time, now the next step for you could be to choose, pick and choose, your home set, let's call it your number one kind of home base. And then what is away from home? Where, where do you go on the other side? Like your neighbor's house <laughs> or down the street. And then, and then when you come back home, now that you've, now you've gone away, and when you come back, that's satisfying. And that's really the key of music, you guys. Tension and release. That's what we like. We like tension and release. And we like to go back and forth, and that gives us the sense of motion and movement, and it's just satisfying. I mean, that's really, that's really, you know, music in a nutshell. <laughs> All right. Um, so I hope this video has been helpful. I want to thank you again for being a patron of the channel, just supporting this work in general. You know, I'm doing a lot of different things in music, and I hope that no matter what your specific interests are, that you find some of these videos and topics uh, illuminating and expansive for yourself, for whatever it is you want to do. And just remember that when you support the channel, you're not just supporting your own learning, you're supporting the learning of thousands of people around the world, many of whom maybe couldn't afford to support the channel, but they're still benefiting, and that's a gift you're giving them. So it's not just, you know, this isn't just for me. I do appreciate the income because I do this for a living, but I also want to thank you for helping chip in to support the, uh, the public videos on YouTube uh, because that's just good for our community in general. So thank you for doing that. All right, I'll see you in another video. Go out and make some great music.